Yo, what's going on, people? It's your man, Dale Mixed It. I'm back with another video. This one's an important one. This is a subject that's not quite as sexy as equipment and microphones and drums and all that kind of stuff that we're typically talking about. Today, I want to talk about file storage. Yeah, I know. It's that one subject that we often avoid, but it comes up when usually we have a problem. Something happens, like we lose our data or, you know, those kind of things. The reason for this particular video is to talk about my upgrade to a new storage solution. So I've been doing this for about 10 years now. And in that 10 years time, like many of you, I have bought lots of hard drives. I bought internal drives, external drives, Firewire, USB 2.0, USB 3, Thunderbolt, you name it. Um, right now I have a five bay um, chassis that's housing five internal drives and then there's a bunch of externals. So for me, it's starting to get a little bit mundane to have that much external storage. For one, I upgraded my machine from a Mac Pro Tower to a Mac Mini, and the Mac Mini does not have anywhere for me to put internal hard drives, so hence why I have an external chassis now. And usually around this time every year, I go through this process of looking through my data, looking at my backups and looking at my hard drives that I have and saying, all right, cool, I can move my this year's backup to this drive because I still have space on this drive and I need to get a new work drive or I need another external for X, Y, and Z. And it's getting to the point to where that's too much. What really highlighted this for me was when I went to look at my storage for this year. So if you don't know, I work in film and television as well as music. Just to kind of give you an idea of the type of files I'm dealing with, one film was one terabyte of space. Wow. Let that sink in. One film for this entire year was one terabyte. And I've done several films this year and albums. I've got a lot of storage. Without looking at my files, like my personal music that I've created and, you know, songwriters and things that I've worked with as a producer, just my internal kind of files, outside of any of that, I have 10 terabytes worth of data. Wow. 10 terabytes. So that's clients all the way back to 08, 09, uh, when I started kind of doing this professionally to now. I have all of that data. You know, everybody's a little bit different on how they choose to deal with, you know, keeping files and that kind of stuff. For me, I keep everything. I'm not, I don't delete anything. Like somebody can call me from five years ago and say, hey, okay, yo, you got that session? Can you pull it up? And I can say, yes, I do have that session. Now I might charge them for me having to pull out a hard drive and go to the archives and dig it out. But nevertheless, I still have it and I can pull it up. And that happens a lot with my clients. The issue with that, becomes, we know hard drives are gonna die eventually because it's a mechanical piece of equipment. It's gonna eventually give out, be old, and so we gotta do something about that. But the longer they sit on the shelf, that's actually bad because the components can wear down in that um, hard drive and then it will no longer spin. So you go one day to plug that thing in and it doesn't actually start up and you've got a problem on your hands. If anybody's had to recover data before, then you know it is really, 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 really expensive to recover hard drive data. Uh, and if it's that important to you, you're gonna pay that money to get those files, whether you like it or not which is also one of the reasons why we spend a lot of money on certain hard drive brands because they actually have great warranties and part of their warranty might also include data recovery. So there's just kind of another tidbit. With all that data, I'm looking at, you know, the need for a lot of storage. And, and here's the problem. I, I'm thinking about this and I'm saying, you know what? I don't wanna keep going down this path year to year, buying new external hard drives and moving this here, moving this there. I want a centralized station for where all of my storage is going to be. Then, let me throw this in there. I have three terabytes on Dropbox. Wow. Yes, you heard me, three terabytes on Dropbox. 
I also have another 100 gigs on Google Drive. I got a lot of storage going on and a lot of different mediums and I'm dealing with a lot of subscription fees. Hello. Um, so I need to start weeding some of that out. I also want to kind of retain control of my files. Um, there, you know, there's something about files being off somewhere else and you know especially with some of the clients i'm dealing with it's actually not a good idea to to use some of those services like i actually have some specialized services that i use for some of the film work because that stuff is so secure that we can't just go through the normal channels of sharing files online and those kind of things so i needed an internal solution so i started looking at you know, Avid has the Nexus server and I've dealt with those working in post-production facilities, but the prices of those machines is ridiculous. So yeah, if you ever bought a Pro Tools HD system or something like that, yeah, you're looking at that kind of price tag just for storage and hard drives. Then that brought me to kind of looking at some of my video friends and people that actually deal with a lot more data than I deal with. And they are all on what they call NAS or network attached storage. And that got me thinking, hmm, the Nexus server from Avid is technically that because we connect to a network and that's for the entire building and everybody jumps on the server and we can pull files, we can upload files, we can actually work on the server. So I was like, oh, wait a minute. I started doing some research and it brought me to this guy. Synology. This is a four bay Synology NAS. Inside of this, I can insert four separate hard drives. And we're not talking about, you know, your one terabyte, two terabyte. We're talking about the big boys, like four, six, 10, 12, 14, 16 terabyte drives that are meant to go inside this thing. And then also not only am I putting the drives in here, it's not just housing the drives and it's just gonna be a bunch of drives like my other chassis that's under the desk here. This is going to be in a RAID. So if you're not familiar with RAID, RAID is an acronym for Redundant Array of in Independent Disk, or if you're old school, I think it's Inexpensive Disk was the thing. So Redundant Array of Independent Disk. And there's different types of configurations for RAID. I'll just show you really quick what some of the main ones are. So RAID 0 is also known as Striped. And what RAID 0 does is it puts the data on two different drives at the same time, two or more at the same time. So this is actually great for speed. So a lot of times with video editing, they have to pull these 4K files and they need to be able to edit on them and, and play them and render them really fast. So RAID 0 is actually great for speed, but not so good for redundancy. So the other thing we have to deal with in professional environments is redundancy and not just backups, which we'll talk about in a second, but actual redundancy in real time. So if you drop down to the next type of RAID, you have RAID 1. And RAID 1 is basically just what they call mirrored. So whatever you write to one drive automatically gets written to another drive. So this is actually really good for mission critical things that you need to kind of have like a working copy immediately. Let's just say a hard drive died like right now in a RAID 1 setup, immediately I can get back to work and have those files ready to go and then I can replace the drive that failed and rebuild the RAID later. That's cool. Um, but, you know, there's a next level that I'm looking to get into and that's very, very popular and that is RAID 5. Now, what's not so cool is that one of the first things is you have to have four drives. Um, you have to have at least four drives for, for, uh, for um, RAID 5 to work. And what RAID 5 does is it distributes the information across all the drives and kind of just spreads it out. And then it does what's called parity. With this parity, you always have the information. So what's great about RAID 5 is you can have one disk fail. And that's what I'm looking for. Now, this hasn't happened to me, but I do have a peer of mine and we were working on a TV show. And in the middle of that show, he was working on an episode and two of his hard drives failed on the same day. Crazy, right? Two drives. So that's scary. Now, fortunately for me, I've heard stories like his and other people that I've been very I'm diligent in my backup process. Um, anybody who's been following me for a while, you know I back up every single day, sometimes twice a day. It just kind of depends on what's going on, but daily backups are a must for me. So with RAID 5, 
you could actually have a drive fail. So I could be working, do, 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 doing my thing, drive crashes, something goes wrong. With RAID 5, all the data is still going to be here because it spread all the data out and it did this parity thing. It's going to allow me to have at least one drive go down and I can continue working. And then what's even cooler about it is the fact that I can replace that drive. So let's say a drive goes down. Cool, drive goes down. I keep working, hop on Amazon real quick, order up a new drive. When that new drive gets here, I can pop the new drive in and it's going to rebuild the rate. It's crazy technology. And for us in, in audio and especially music, we don't really pay much attention to this stuff. This is way outside of most of our scope of, of um, technology where we're not digging into this. But you talk to some video guys, graphics, they're all on the RAID. They've been doing it for years. And you've probably shot for hard drives and seen RAID drives and kind of tried to wonder what that is and if that's important for you. And I'm here to tell you, yes, it is important for you. If you're doing mission critical client work and you're getting paid for it, RAID is the thing that's going to save you. Because what's cool about, again, these systems is they're doing it automatically. Even my backup system is flawed because if I'm working during the day and something happens, technically, if a drive crashes, I could lose that day's worth of data. But depending on what type of RAID you're running, you could actually have your data immediately while, while things are going. So this is very appealing the more and more work you're starting to do and the more and more storage you have. So off of the RAID, that, that's that. Look into that a little bit more if you're, you're still unclear about RAID, but definitely something that I say that you should look into. But yeah, so going back to me getting this, what's gonna be great about this is with network attached storage, I'm no longer attaching a hard drive to my computer. Now, this box is going to get plugged in to a router or switch, an ethernet, and coming off the actual network here at the studio. And that's how I'm gonna access it. So I can access the files on it and I can put new files on it. And that's going to be now my central station. Now I'm still going to kind of have work drives. I haven't gotten to the point to where I'm gonna feel comfortable working on this as of yet. But what the next process is gonna be is for me to populate this thing with the drives. And then I'm gonna start moving all of my archives and backups to this, then I'm going to take all the drives that, that have been used for archives and backups and I'm gonna wipe them and those are now gonna become work drives. And basically what that means for me is during the day, I'm going to work on those drives and I'll be able to spread projects around on the different drives. And then of course do my daily backups to the NAS so I'm not gonna be using external for that. I'm gonna actually use the NAS for my daily backups. And then with that, I will have the actual work drive. I will have my NAS with everything on it. And then also the next step for that is going to be, I'm going to have a third backup. Then now in the tech world, a lot of people talk about the three to one rule. If you don't have it in three places, then it doesn't actually exist. So what that basically means is you have one copy that's kind of the working copy. Then you have a second copy that's a backup, a, a working backup, if you will. And then you have a third copy, which that third copy is actually off site. So some people go put this in a safety deposit box at a bank. Some people have this at somebody else's house, some type of storage facility, wherever, but away from your place. And the whole idea is if your place of work, your studio burned down or somebody came and robbed you, depending on what they took, your work copy is gone and your backup is gone because that was your on-site backup. If your working copy went down for some reason, you had a, a backup that you could grab immediately. But if you lose both of those drives, you have nothing. Now, some people are using the cloud for this. So I'm actually looking into that, but again, that gets pretty expensive. Again, I told you I have three terabytes of Dropbox. And if you ain't never looked up how much that costs a month, do yourself a favor and go look at it. It's, it's not cheap. Um, but I needed another option. So again, this box, this Synology, if, and the reason I went with Synology, let me just kind of just give you kind of a quick thing on Synology. After all the research I did on NAS and kind of talking to a couple people, Synology is very well known, especially for their software. They have a lot of software that makes, first of all, getting into NAS super easy. And then also that allows you to do things like backups and cloud. And so that's the next thing for me. I'm actually gonna be weaning myself off of Dropbox 
And um, Google Drive will stay because a lot of my clients actually still use Google, Google Drive, but I'm not gonna have as much space on my Google Drive because what's cool about having your own network attack storage is they have this uh, thing called Synology Drive. And with Synology Drive, you can actually use it like Dropbox. So you've got the um, your Synology there, so there's what your server will look like. And then you've got an admin area, you've got the Synology Drive where you actually can log in to your NAS no matter where you are. This is anywhere in the world. Um, you can log into it and you can pull files. You can also use Drive Share Sync. So you can actually sync files with other locations and other people. And so with that, you can go into your NAS wherever you are and pull files, download them, upload new files, and guess what? There's another thing that you can do. File sharing. This was another one that had me like, oh, this is super dope. I can share files. So the same way you go into Dropbox and you click right click and you say share this with XYZ, you do the same thing here. But instead of it being online, it's here on my NAS. So I have the files. Dropbox don't have the files. I got the files. Somebody's logging into my network and they're pulling the files directly from me. So I can easily share files with them. I can even do file requests, which is one of the features I use a lot on Dropbox. If you're not familiar with that, you should get familiar with it. So as a mixing engineer, a lot of times people need to send me files. And yeah, you got WeTransfer and all this stuff, but that gets convoluted. And again, it's not as streamlined as it could be. I'll go into file requests and I'll actually send them a link. When they upload files off of my file request, those files go straight to my Dropbox and they're immediately available for me as soon as they're done uploading and I can grab them and begin to work. Now, instead of them doing that to Dropbox, they're gonna now be able to do that directly to my NAS. And so I'm gonna have the files here on my network, never hit the internet. I'm able to grab those files directly from there and begin working. That's super dope. For me, this is the next step. Cause again, I'm looking at 10 terabytes of client files. That's not including the other two terabytes of sound effects libraries, all of my virtual instruments, my music and things that I've produced and, and worked on just kind of privately on my own. And I don't even want to look at my video drive because I do videos for a lot of different things. If we just go with the 12 terabytes that I know right now off the top of my head, I needed to get those 12 terabytes put somewhere else, but then also look at the future. By jumping into the NAS, this is expandable. That was the, the, the third thing I was looking for, was expandability going forward. With this, I'm actually gonna be populating this with 22 terabytes. So yes, I'm going to have 22 terabytes in this box. So what that means is my current 12 terabytes, I'm gonna be able to offload and put on the NAS. And I will immediately begin to be able to put new information on it and I'm gonna have that much space. We're going from 12 to 22, that's 10 more terabytes of space that I've got. And if we just use the last 10 years of, as an example, that's how long it took me to get to the current 12 terabytes I have. So we'll just say another 10 years, but I highly doubt it's gonna be another 10 years because I have films coming in right now as we speak. So it's gonna be less than that, but still, I have a lot more space available to me. So it's not gonna be a situation to where file comes in, I'm out of space, I gotta run to Best Buy or Micro Center or wherever, grab a drive and, and get ready for that project. I have space to do so. Even if I need to take stuff off of existing work drives and move it over, it doesn't matter. I have enough space here. And so eventually the goal is actually gonna be to start working off of the NAS, but I, I just had I gotta play around with it. I gotta get familiar with the system and see how it works fully. I have a grasp of it after all the research I've done, but I actually have to now get my hands on it myself and, and work with it and see how it works and get it into the workflow. But the, the goal will be to actually be working off of the NAS. That way my data is always just in this one place. Cause I still gonna have that kind of that, that gray area period right now where I've got the work drive and the work drive gets backed up daily to the NAS. If I want to upgrade the drives in this, so let's say that 22 terabytes is starting to get filled for me and I need to upgrade. I can yank a drive out, stick in a 14 terabyte drive and let it rebuild the RAID with that 14 terabyte in there. 
I can keep doing that. So I could actually upgrade all the drives, not simultaneously, but over time and kind of just keep upping this until I get to the point to where it's like, okay, I need to have more physical drives. It's no longer a, a, a situation where I can keep expanding on this four bay unit. I actually need to add more physical drives, be it a bigger unit or be actually just expanding this. Um, I think with, I can add another one that's a uh, five bay and get up to nine drives um, with this kind of being the hub. So yeah, that that's where I'm at with this. And what's if you go on Synology's website, they have this uh, RAID calculator, which basically allows you to kind of calculate what your RAID's gonna look like. Cause the one thing you have to kind of kind of deal with when you're looking at RAID is unless you're doing the RAID zero, or some of the other types of RAIDs to where it combines the disk together and you get all the mass storage. You always have to factor in with RAID, you're going to be losing a certain amount of, of space. And usually it's kind of um, whatever your, your biggest drive is. So like going back to that RAID 1 mirror, if I had a two terabyte RAID drive, what would happen is if it's two terabytes, technically I only have one terabyte of space to store things on because I'm going to be writing to the one terabyte and then the RAID manager is going to be mirroring that information onto the second drive, again, which is great for redundancy and having an immediate backup of whatever it is you're working on right then and there. With RAID 5, what's going to happen is you can see um, I would have, uh, with my co configuration currently, I would end up with 12 terabytes of available space, four of terabytes would be used for protection, and then I would have six terabytes that's unused because of this weird... Um, configuration I got going on. So with the Synology Hybrid RAID, I'm going to have 16 terabytes of available space and then six terabytes used for protection. And again, that's just my um, redundancy um, that allows one drive to fail and I can still get my data back and have everything just like it was and, and not lose anything there. So that's, that's where I'm at. Um, again, this is not sexy like hardware and mic preamps and all that stuff, but it's important to the degree um, that you can't overlook this. And I kind of wish I would have been into this much earlier because it probably would have saved me some money buying external drives and just time kind of moving files around and I, that kind of stuff. Because when you start moving terabytes of, file, of data around, that's a long time. We're talking about like, okay, let me drag this file um, and peace out. Like I'm going to go get dinner and hang out with the fellas or something because that's going to take some hours to go, depending on the speed of the drives. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I'll be doing a follow-up video once I get it all uh, put together and everything's running and I've spent some time with it, kind of getting it going. But I'll definitely come back and, and, and follow up and give you guys kind of, you know, a, a working review, if you will, of how it's been going. What are the pros? What are the cons? Uh, there's a lot of pros just on the surface. Like I, I see very few cons right now, just as I've done my research and just thinking about this upgrade. This has been like three weeks for me, just kind of looking at things because I've got a couple of projects that I had to put on drives that are um, not my normal work drive, just because I needed to get my backups from 2020 done before I could redo my, my work drives for 2021. So now that I've got this, I'm going to get this all set up and, and going. Um, but yeah, man, take your files seriously. First of all, back it up. Like if you're not doing backups, you need to be doing backups, like religiously. Like I say every day, you should be doing backup, but you know, some people do it once a week or whatever, but figure out a system that works for you. Even if you have to automate it, there's plenty of things that do automated backups. You got, um, if you're on a Mac, you have Time Machine, which I don't really like. Now this is not personal experience, but from hearing from others, with Time Machine, it's not an instant kind of deal. Like it, you have to load up the, the backup and then it has to re, build your your data and for me or anybody in the working environment that ain't it that's too long like i need my files immediately so what i actually use is a program called super duper and it's actually super cheap to get and it can do um basically um copy a drive so like for my um internal system drive i actually have a copy of it so actually right here this is a copy of my internal drive so if for whatever reason my computer crashed right now, like right this instant. This is my computer, minus whatever files got loaded, you know, today. All my software, all my plugins, 
It's all right here on this drive. So that's a redundant copy of my actual internal drive that I can immediately plug in and, and get back to work. So that's important for me. I want that zero downtime. I want to be able to plug in the drive and get to going like just, just immediately. So that's, that's that for me. I don't want to hear crazy stories from anybody I know about, oh, I lost this session or I lost this album or whatever it is. Like, don't be that person. Listen to everybody who's telling you to back up. Look at all the horror stories that you can find on the internet. Search YouTube, my hard drive crash, I lost my music, whatever it is, you know, look at that stuff. Or I'll give you another one. If anybody follows um, Ryan Leslie, the, uh, the producer, he actually had his computer stolen a few years back. If he had a backup, you know, it'd still be a, a, a stressful thing because that's your music, that's your files, all your stuff is out there for somebody to get. But at least if you had a backup of it, it's not as heartbreaking to the fact of I lost everything and I don't have a way to get it back. It's more so, uh, dang, somebody has that and they could release my music before I'm done with it or, you know, whatever. But if you've got a backup of it, cool. Somebody stole my bag. Somebody stole my laptop. All right, that sucks. You know, if I got insurance, the insurance will take care of the money side of it. And if I got a backup, cool. I'm just going to get back to the studio, whip out the backup, and get back to work. Like, I'm not going to stress about it because I know I have the data. So, yeah, back your files up. If you want to talk to me directly about this kind of stuff, um, I'm I'm open. Um, just hit me up. Y'all know y'all know all the information. I'll leave it down below for you to 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 get to if you don't know it. But yeah, man, um, I'm switching to NAS. Um, that's the new thing for me. Network attack storage Synology. Uh, we're gonna see how this goes, and I'll report back. Thank y'all so much for watching. If you like the information you got here, please think about subscribing. Whatever you need, uh, hit me up. I'm I'm here for you. Trying to make you better at this thing that we call music production, audio engineering, microphones, whatever. I got you. I'm your man. Dale Mixed It. Peace.